Entre 1975 et aujourd'hui, plus de 70 000 juifs éthiopiens ont immigré en Israël. Ceci dans des conditions souvent difficiles. Arrivés ici, leur intégration dans la société a été loin d'être évidente. Confrontés à un mode de vie bien éloigné du leur, les juifs d'Éthiopie vont très vite faire connaissance avec le chômage et le racisme. Mais je m'arrête ici car je vais tout droit à la rencontre de Tsega, une journaliste israélienne d'origine éthiopienne qui, je l'espère, nous en dira un peu plus sur l'immigration éthiopienne en Israël. My name is Agamalako. I was born in Ethiopia. I'm a Jew. Chapitre 1. L'Éthiopie et l'Alia. I know my Jewishness since I was born. And to be a Jew, it's not easy in that time. Because in everywhere, anti-Semitism. And the Ethiopian, especially in my city, most of them, they are Christian. And they believe the Jewish had evil eye. And it's not easy for us because if somebody is sick, they said, oh, because of that Jewish girl or the Jewish guy and the Jewish had evil eye and uh, we suffered really. And that was because of our religion, our Jewishness, not because of our color skin or something that we aren't the same as other Ethiopians. And uh, I made Alia, that means I immigrated to Israel In the beginning of 1994, I was uh, 16 years old. I immigrated to Israel uh, without my parents because in my time, the Ethiopian regime was a communist regime and supported by a former Russian government and a communist regime and doesn't give us a permission to leave Ethiopia. And uh, that was a secret mission. And that's why I came to Israel alone. In my time, the most Ethiopian Jewish community worked through Sudan. But I was very lucky. And uh, I came to Israel by airplane. That means Ethiopia to Egypt, Egypt to um, Israel uh, by airplane. And that's why I came to Israel uh, without family. And my parents, they enjoy with me eight years later. I remember when I came to Israel, my father said, you know, Tsega, you have to go first. And after uh, months or two months, we'll be follow you. And that's a secret mission. And my father said, uh, you don't have to go uh, through Sudan. That was very dangerous. Uh, the community died in Sudan. And that was a secret mission. I was very proud to come to Jerusalem. Enjoy in Jerusalem, and after a few months, parents will be in jail with me. But you know what we think in the other and the realistic was in a different way, and that took eight years. It was a very hard time for me in Israel as a new immigrant to adapt in a new tradition, culture, language, Hebrew language, and everything was very new. And on the other hand, Uh, also, I miss a parent and the family. And also, in, uh, Israelis, they don't know black Jews exist, you know. I want to tell you, my father, in 1955, 56, 57, he learned Hebrew in Eritrea, north part of Ethiopia, in Asmara, in a Jewish school. And he speaks Hebrew fluently. And his teachers, they were a Yemenite Jew. And they told me about Yemenite Jews. That means not only Ethiopian Jews exist in this planet, also Yemenite Jew, but no way in a white Jew with blue eye or green eye and blonde hair. And uh, but when I arrive here in Israel, Israelis uh, they don't know about Jewish black Jew. And that was you know shocked for me. I know about black Jew. They know it only white. They are Jew. It's not easy. Also, Israelis, and, uh, I think not only Israelis, the white people, they have a stereotype, you know. If you are from Africa, you don't know anything. And uh, if you are from Ethiopia, you don't know anything. And uh, it's not easy. I, I told you, uh, I want to tell you, when I came to Israel the first time, they want to change my name. 
my name is Tsega. That is happiness. They said they, they said it's very difficult to pronounce my name, and they want to give me Israeli's name. When they ask me what does it mean Tsega, I said happiness, and they said wow, that's like Oshra, and they want to give me Oshra. It's not my name, and uh, it's not easy, you know. But uh, after eight years, my parents enjoy with me, with my, my brothers and sister. But, you know, my mom, she said, she sent a very young, 10 year girl. And when we met, after eight years, I'm already a woman, 24 years old. Israeli society, it's not easy. If you ask Israelis, they said, wow, Ethiopians are very smart very quiet, the beautiful people, but they don't want to live together in the same building. And they don't want to send their children in the same school. This is the point, you know. Everywhere we came to Israel to live together. I think nobody see, doesn't have a monopoly about the state of Israel. Also, this is my part. This is my place. Chapitre 2. Meet the reality. Ethiopia, I never feel that is, that was my place. You know, one day I will be in my home. That was uh, every time we are talking about uh, Jerusalem. Every Shabbat. You know, in Ethiopia, we heard we are talking about Jerusalem. We never talking about Tel Aviv or Haifa. That's only Jerusalem. The Ethiopian Jewish community were very religious community. And every time we pray next year to be Jerusalem, the Holy Land. And when I came to Israel, you know, that was shocked for me. Because what I know, I heard about Jerusalem, that is very special religious place. And only, you know, in a milk river and then honey. And uh, the religious people, they pray day and the night. And the righteous people, they are living here in Jerusalem. When I came to Israel the first time, what I saw, my first step place was in Tiberias. I saw a lot of white buildings. And uh, I saw, when we visited in Jerusalem, I saw in a coffee shop and the nightclub, everything, I said, no, it's not Jerusalem. Jerusalem had to be a special place. How it could be Jerusalem, dirty? How it could be in Jerusalem, coffee shop, nightclub, crowded? You know, in my imagination, was about Jerusalem, just, you know, everything is quiet. The uh, synagogue, and... Uh, they pray, special people live here. Everybody said shalom, hello for everybody. That was my imagination, you know, what I know about Jerusalem. And it was very shocked for me, you know, it's not easy. I think what we know about Jerusalem in uh, Ethiopia, that's just, you know, just a, a dream. It's not realistic. And uh, when... Uh, I arrived here, when we arrived here, that was for us, for Ethiopian Jewish community, you can live in a secular life, or reform conservative, you know. It's, n it's new for us, we don't know that. How it could be this kind of division, this kind of part of Jewishness? If you are a Jew, that means we have something common, we are a Jew. It's, uh, you know, it's not easy, but you know, it takes time. Now I understand, but in the first time, it's, it takes a long time. My mom still now, she, she's not understand. Chapitre 3, les Palestiniens. When, nine, in 2005, uh, after this engagement, uh, you know, I spent one week there, in this engagement time. After that, I was, believes, Maybe a Palestinian start to dialogue, to talk, and uh, to build their state. But what I know now, 
let's say educated and uh, their children especially in Gaza and instead of to give them a good education they educated them to hit each other or to hit uh, Israelis chapitre 4 l'avenir d'Israël Israel is uh, you know um, very modern and more educated society but uh, in other hand I'm very worried about uh, social life that means uh, you can see here in, uh, the difference between rich and the poor people and uh, you know in Hebrew we say the uh, Am Israel Arev Zalaza I think we lost it Now everybody's individual life to get more money, more uh, better life, and uh, the, they don't care about weak people, poor people. You can see more in the poor and uh, old people, they are suffered. And uh, I think uh, the problem is social security life. And uh, Israel is more and more capitalist economic system. It's very bad. I'm worried.